oh my god i already want to cry hormones are crazy in the third trimester too by the way hey y'all welcome back to my channel my name is michelle burr i'm currently 34 weeks pregnant with my first baby if you're new here you might not know this my husband and i conceived through ivf so this baby is long awaited for and we cannot wait to meet him but since i'm 34 weeks i'm going to be updating you on my 32 and 33 week pregnancy update if you follow me on instagram or you watch like all my other vlogs that i post in between these updates you pretty much stay like up to speed up to date but i know that people like to hear like the specific changes week by week and the specific symptoms because it's just really helpful especially if you're pregnant or maybe you just like to watch them for fun even before i was pregnant i love to watch like pregnancy updates for fun i also do bump shots at the end of these videos where i show you how my bump is looking how it's growing now that i have like a good proper actual baby bump i so look forward to doing these updates y'all he is large and in charge <laughs> i say that every week but i'm like Oh my god, he's so big and I'm like, I don't know how he's gonna get bigger, but he is. So for my 32 week update, I just have it here on my phone. Um, I just put huge movements and oh my god, I love it so much. So his movements are so big. His movements are like, you know, like there's an actual baby in there and he's moving and sometimes it's a little painful because of his size but I still love it so much. These big movements are everything. These I think back to whenever he first started doing his first little kicks and I was so excited about him. Those kicks have nothing on these rolls and pokes and like when he like sticks his elbow like out the side of me or a heel or like, oh, it's the best. I love it so much. And I always like will put my hand on it and like just to like feel it. Like I just want to feel him. I actually had a dream that this is kind of weird. Actually, I told Matt about this dream and he was like, ooh, I don't know that I would want to dream that. <laughs> but I had a dream that Nash was like putting his hand up like in my stomach. Like I was looking at my belly, he was putting his hand up, but I could see his little fingers and I just like grabbed his little hand through my skin and I was just like playing with his little hand and I could feel it. Like I could feel it in my sleep and it was the best. Ever. That might be really weird to some people, but I loved it. So over Christmas time, we went to my in-laws for Christmas dinner. My blood sugar actually spiked over 120 for the first time, and that hasn't happened yet. And, you know, I felt fine. I would have never known if I wasn't, like, pricking my finger and, like, checking my blood sugar. But after Christmas dinner, it was over 120. So I had to, like, write it in my log, and I just was, like, so <laughs> worried. I was so ashamed. But like what I was eating was not, I mean, I don't eat like that on a regular basis, but it wasn't even like anything crazy that I should be ashamed of. Like I wasn't pigging out on Taco Bell. Like it was just Christmas dinner. I just felt awful. Somebody asked me on Instagram if I'm already experiencing mom guilt and that's whenever my blood sugar spiked like that, I did have like a little feeling where I was like, wow, is this mom guilt? Like I just felt like a bad mom over a high blood sugar level, which is, it sucks. It really sucks. And I try to just like shoot it down and tell myself that the fact that I'm like pricking my finger and checking my blood sugar in the first place means that I'm a really good mom. And just cause I had one bad reading, it's not the end of the world. You know, there's women that still drink big Dr. Peppers and Cokes and they go get hamburgers every day and they just enjoy their pregnancy to the fullest and I don't do that on a day-to-day -day basis. So I just, I can't beat my myself up over it. And then we basically like got home from my in-laws. Every blood sugar reading after that was normal. We got home from my in-laws and ever since then, every blood sugar reading has been normal. So my mother-in-law, <laughs> <laughs> loves to bake and she goes out of her way to make sure that everything that she bakes she has a separate gluten-free batch for me which I usually am so thankful for like what mother-in-law goes out of their way to like cater to dietary needs on every holiday not many and she does that for me all the time but since I'm having to watch my sugar I'm like <sighs> 
why? <laughs> like, I would not be mad if you left me out of this one. But she can't because she loves me. But, I mean, it's just, I just have to learn to not be so hard on myself. And the holidays are over, so we're going to be good. Um, also, in my 32nd week, we announced his name. And that was the best feeling ever. Honestly, like, if you're on the fence about names or you're just, like, worried, like, oh, this isn't going to fit my baby. Like, I'm scared to tell the world because... What if I change my mind? Or what if, you know, that's not meant to be his name? Or what if I regret telling people his name and it doesn't feel right? I kid you not, as soon as, soon as we like announced it and it was out in the world and I saw his name everywhere. I saw it on my phone, on my Instagram, things around the house. I bought some stuff for him like with his name on it. It felt right. Like, that's Nash. I even told Matt the other day, I was like, how did I think that his name was gonna be anything else besides Nash? Which is a really weird feeling because we couldn't decide, we were going back and forth, and I was thinking about the other name that we liked. He was almost Decker. And I was just like, looking at his ultrasound pictures, thinking about like his announcement, and thinking about him, and I was just like, He's not Decker, he's not, he's nothing but Nash. Like, how was I gonna name him anything but Nash Matthew Burr? So it felt really, really good, and that was a sign to me that we are making beyond the right decision. Um, and then the last thing that I put for my 32 week update is that ice water is my jam. I feel like I'm back in the first trimester as far as thirst goes, I have a never, never ending thirst and whenever I drink it, it tastes like it's made from the gods. Like I am so thirsty all the time. I don't know if it's just carrying around a bigger baby in the third trimester, um, I don't know. But I am super freaking thirsty all the time and my thirst is literally never quenched, quite honestly. Heartburn is still a thing, it's really, really bad it's the worst that it's ever been my heartburn tea still works and i also have been doing the alka-seltzer gum which works better than any time anything but i have to have that on hand like and i have to watch like how much i'm eating because on the box it says if pregnant do not exceed like five or something and acids a day i don't know the numbers don't quote me on that but it's on the back of the box and i really have to watch because i have constant heartburn all day long and I could easily you know eat a whole pack of those in one day so I think that might be the only thing I'm looking forward to getting him out of this belly is to be able to freely eat and not have heartburn from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed that is the only reason that I'm like okay I'm looking forward to him not being in there so my digestive tract can just like go back to normal and I can freely like eat and do whatever but that's really the only thing that uh, i have a feeling i'm i'm gonna be happy when he's here but i just sometimes i have moments where i think about my pregnancy with him coming to an end oh my god i already want to cry why am i gonna cry hormones are crazy the third trimester too by the way sometimes i think about like my pregnancy with nash coming to an end and like He's my first baby and I'm never gonna get this back with him. I'm never gonna experience this again with him. I'll experience it again with like future babies, but I just, I'm trying to like really enjoy his movements and him being with me all the time in my belly and it's the best feeling ever. And lately, as I get closer, I just feel like I'm gonna be like kind of sad whenever I'm not pregnant anymore. But him being here in the world with me and us being able to like live our life as a family is probably 100% gonna overshadow me missing being pregnant. I mean, it's okay to miss being pregnant, but um, he obviously needs to be in this world with us. Anyways, so now moving on to my 33 week symptoms. I had a day in my 33, in my 33rd week where I was kind of crampy and it was weird to me. It was actually in the middle of the night. My friend Whitney was like, hey, maybe you, you, you know, you're thirsty all the time. 
but maybe you didn't realize that you might have been a little on the dehydrated side because you can get dehydrated really easily while you're pregnant and it can cause like little cramps in your belly but they're just like dehydration cramps so i would like wake up in the middle of the night and before below my belly button was like really sharp-ish cramps like a period cramp and um it would just it it kind of came in a few waves and so i was like holy shit like are these really 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 light starting contractions but then they eventually just went away and i was able to go to sleep so either it was like growing pain cramps it didn't feel like round ligament pain like it was actual like period cramps but they went away i went back to sleep and it hasn't happened in a week so i could have been just a little bit dehydrated and my uterus was cramping a little bit i'm not sure it was really weird it was really random i knew that everything was okay in my heart but there's also that like little thing in the back of your mind where you're like oh god what if something is about to happen like especially because i was only 33 weeks and things shouldn't be happening so it was a little worrisome but the fact that it completely went away we're good and then i had a few days of like extreme tiredness too and this is the first time that i've experienced extreme fatigue and tiredness since the first trimester because y'all know how it is in the first trimester you are just the most tired that you've ever felt in your life like you thought you've been tired before in your life but no ain't nothing like first trimester pregnancy tired or fatigue and i started to feel that again for a few days this past week and i just told matt like it's so weird like why am i so tired why am i so tired i kept saying why am i so tired why am i so tired and he's like babe i think that's pretty common for the, your third trimester like you're gonna start slowing down and i'm like what if you take anything from this video take this i am so freaking glad that we did the majority of the nursery like pretty much all the big stuff of the nursery and then i could do just like little things little at a time in the middle endish of my second trimester i am so glad you have those days where you're so tired that you do not give a shit at all like there's days that i was just so tired that there were things in the house that needed to be done that i could not care less there were things in the nursery that i literally didn't care and i'm like you know what it can wait even if i don't do it until the baby's home with me it's not the end of the world that's how tired i was um and i kind of really wanted to do things early because people told me like get a lot done in your middle to last part of your second trimester because you will be tired and i'm just now starting to experience that also because i do youtube and i upload videos to share with y'all and help y'all with like hospital bags and i'm gonna do a nursery tour nursery organization to hopefully help y'all i do i did choose to think do these things just like two weeks earlier like a little earlier just so i can have the time to like film edit upload get y'all's feedback change things if i need to so doing youtube definitely has me doing things early but heck i am glad that i did i also put that i'm definitely getting the waddle i just now noticed that when i'm walking i kind of like am tilting my pelvis a little more up towards the sky and i'm kind of like waddling a little more so i'm getting the pregnancy waddle as this belly grows and everything starts to stretch and open and expand for the preparation of labor and then i put that my appetite is officially gone heartburn has a lot to do with that i don't want to eat because of how bad my heartburn is but also my appetite's just gone i mean when your belly is just full of baby your digestive system is it don't know what to do it just doesn't know what to do all this week i haven't had dinner i just am literally living off of apples peanut butter i've had a random craving for cheese lately and then i'm like Maybe I'm not getting enough calcium for the baby. That's why my body's craving cheese. So I've been eating cheese. Just random stuff, gluten-free pretzels. Like that's my dinner, pickles and popcorn. I just can't imagine having a highly seasoned, full warm meal at dinner, if that makes sense. Let me know if you can relate to that. It's like a really weird feeling. At the end of my 33 weeks, which was yesterday, I had a, day of 
like no movement from the baby. Whenever you're having consistent, big, constant movement and then didn't feel movements from him for most of the day. It was really alarming, especially you notice that your baby has like habits and routines. So I know that after I have my breakfast and I sit down to edit or I sit down to reply to comments or whatever I'm working on, he's always, always kicking, like kicking my ribs. It's like the cutest time. We do it every day. So when that doesn't happen, y'all can probably relate to this, it gets in your head and it really messes with your head. And so I was really worried about that. He was quiet and still for a really long time, like a really long time. <laughs> um, so I finally, like I was doing things around the house to like distract me from it. But then I was like, you know what? I'm moving around. I'm not really like paying attention as well as I should. I need to sit still for an extended amount of time and really make sure that everything's okay. So um, what I did was I got a sugary drink, which I had to go out and get. I got a little tall sugary Starbucks drink. And the reason I have to go out and get stuff like that is because I have gestational diabetes and whenever you need some sugar, you can't find it in your house. So I went and got a little tall Starbucks drink and then I came home and I laid down and I just told myself like I was dedicating time and I told myself, okay, if I don't feel in the next two hours or whatever, then I'm gonna call my ob -GYN. And this is the first time in the whole pregnancy that I really did consider calling my ob -GYN for something. So the fact that I was like literally seconds from picking up my phone and calling my ob -GYN means that I was truly really starting to get concerned. It was very stressful. And when I say it's very stressful, it's literally all you can think about. You can't do anything else. I literally like at one point was just like, come on boy, like just give me a movement, please. Just one kick, I'll take one kick please just give me a movement. And he never did. And I'm talking like silence, still, just still silence, nothing. So I had my drink. I was like laying around for two hours. I accidentally fell asleep actually. And as soon as I woke up, <sighs> thank you, Jesus. He started having a full blown party in my belly and he would not stop moving. So, and it was those big, beautiful movements where my whole belly was shaking and I was just like, thank you so much, Nash. Like, mommy needed that. I don't know what his deal was. I don't know why he was like quieter than usual. Let me know if that's happened to you before. It was kind of freaky. I do know in the third trimester, they say that they can run out of room in there as they get bigger. But to me, that means that their movements would be smaller because they don't have as much like room to move but not less frequent or not non-existent. Like it would be something, but it wouldn't be like those big jabs or big moves. Um, so I knew that I needed to be feeling something. Um, but anyways, he started dancing, partying, doing his crazy thing, moving my whole stomach, kicking me in the ribs, and I'm so grateful that he did that. Okay guys, so that is it for my symptoms. It is time to look at this belly. Here's the bump. All right, that is it for this video. I told you my belly was getting big. It literally feels like a basketball most days, but I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Double check, because a lot of y'all that come across my videos are not subscribed to my channel, or maybe you just follow me on Instagram, and whenever I post on Instagram that I have a new video, you go click the link and watch the video but you don't actually subscribe to my channel. So make sure and double check that you did that. I have a really big goal for myself. I want to see if before my due date, which is February 17th, if I can make it to 10,000 subscribers. And I think I can do it. I'm almost to 7,000 right now. I don't know, is that crazy? 
What do y'all think? Is that crazy? <laughs> I just think it would be really, really cool. So double check, make sure you're subscribed, send my videos, videos to your friends, tell them to subscribe. I really want to reach 10K before the baby's here. How cool would it be to be celebrating a new baby and a 10,000 subscriber milestone? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so thankful for you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Before I'm doing this